Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So there has been a number of different news items and announcements that have been made, and I decided to kind of wrap all that up into this video right here, where hopefully I can give you the very latest and greatest of what's happening with PP Pun. Let's go ahead and let's get started right now. So the most significant news item has really been this project right here, which is a C++ rewrite of the Flow's PP Pawn. Now, he originally wrote that in Python. Python is great for a lot of different tasks, but there is some problems, and that is mainly is that they can't run on every single device. There's also lower powered devices and so forth. So rewriting this in C++ was absolutely the smart thing to do. So this person has went ahead and started that project and this is pretty much complete. Now they are making some modifications. As I saw right here around nine hours ago, they just added support for Windows on ARM. So again, all of these ARM devices, these low-powered devices can easily run this C++ program. So what we have seen is, is that everybody's kind of taken this as now their base and started to implement it in a number of different things. So the very first thing is, is that you'll start seeing this implemented in all the Windows GUIs for PP Pawn. So this is the current project that I'm using when I am trying to jailbreak on a Windows machine. It's a nice little package. You can come in here to the releases and you can download this 7-zip and then there is just an executable in there that you just double click and you run. Now there is some notes here that if you do want to set this up as a startup application, uh, then you can absolutely do so. So basically every time you run Windows, this application will be running as well. And your PS4, if it's connected with an Ethernet cable, it will be automatically jailbroken. Make sure to read what is written right here before you jump into this. So this is the best solution or one of the best solutions for Windows in my opinion. Now, moving on to other devices, we have this one right here, which is a script to set up PP Pawn via a web browser. And the main focus is on a router. So this is going to be something that potentially folks that have a compatible router could use and could jailbreak their console with. Now, this project is being actively updated as well. I don't know anyone who has ran this, but I definitely wanted to call this out as an option. The next project is the one for the LG television. And there is a number of different features that kind of comes out of this. Mainly, it's that you're able to root your television. Once you root your television, you would simply plug an Ethernet cable from the back of your PlayStation 4 all the way to the back of your television and then you could either go ahead and SSH into it to perform the exploit or you could go into their own homebrew channel on the LG app store and download an application that would automatically run it from there. Um, I did create a video which is linked to in this repo right here. I'll also link it into the description below if you want to check that out. It's very simple to jailbreak an LG television and pretty much all models are compatible except for the brand new 2024 model. So definitely give that a look. Next up is running PP Pawn on a Raspberry Pi. So the main project that, again, a lot of projects are kind of using as their base is this one by Stooged. This one works with a number of different models. I have a video, again, that shows you how to do it. And there is also a bunch of other folks that have started taking this and doing other things with it, such as the project that came out from Cairo. And it says, I optimize the PP Pawn Stooged version for the Raspberry Pi 02W and 0W with USB Ethernet. Jailbreak time is about 30 seconds to 50 seconds, and they tested it themselves. So I would absolutely recommend that you check out this project too. 
it looks like both of these are probably going to be the projects that most people uh, use, at least at this uh, current time. They also stated that they are using the C++ version as well. And then I just saw this message, which was, I use this as a reference if you want to port Linux to firmware 11. Now, do keep in mind that this is for running Linux on the PlayStation 4. As we know from this C++ program, Linux is obviously somewhere that this already runs perfectly fine. But it is interesting to see there's kind of this startup discussion on getting Linux to run on a firmware 11 PlayStation 4. More to come on that. There was also a couple of utilities that came out. One of these was PS4 Database Rebuilder. So what this does is this rebuilds the database whenever your PS4 came back, maybe from some sort of error, and a bunch of your games are missing. If you rerun this, your fake package games, which is what I'm referring to, would be back on your PlayStation 4. And then there's another project here that is all about PS4 save utilities. So this one pretty much just mounts and unmounts the PS4 save data. So not a lot of features right now, but this is in the very, very, very early stages. They did note that they are basically making a C implementation of a bunch of these different functions that have been out there for quite some time for the PS4. So maybe we will see more added to this. I definitely want a jailbroken PS4 cloud save solution. I would even pay the AWS bill. And then there has been a ton of applications that have been updated for firmware number 11. Now, I looked at some of the ones from Lappy, so like PS4 Explorer is one that obviously works on 11. I think the temperature was another one. No icon mask works, but if you do go back to the main page here and go ahead and just explore some of the options out there. And then in the very last bit of news, I saw that John Tornblum, who's done a number of stuff for the PlayStation 5, has this brand new repo that says that this is a pack brew package repository for jailbroken PlayStation 5s. So what I'm thinking that this is, is this is kind of like a one-stop shop if you have a jailbroken device and maybe you want to set that up. So maybe you automatically install some homebrew applications. There isn't a lot of information in here right now at this point, but definitely something that I am going to be keeping an eye on. Well, anyway, I hope you got something out of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out.